You mentioned MC Light. Um, yes. That song that you like, that was a. Uh, that was Lauren's first extra in a music video. Lauren was in that video? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Yo, that's crazy. It's your boy Wyclef. Clef. And we want we want to thank y'all for joining us today. And um, if y'all hear like noise in the background, we actually outside the Wyclef. Clef. We call it the Jean State actually. And um, I'll start it like this. I remember when I was getting the the Humanitarian Award for BET. And then I said from the hut to the projects to the mansion, basically you don't have no excuse, you know what I mean? So for me, um, I just want to start off by saying that anything you dream of, any possibilities, that you think of, the only thing that's stopping you is the hard work, the imagination, the dream, and the making it happen, you know what I mean? So we're gonna get into people that has made it happen. Not in a form of like bragging to you, but they could tell you stories. You know, one of the things I hated, like coming up when they always was like, oh, so-and-so is gonna come to your school and talk to you. And it's some big shot and he comes, but he's telling me he did this, he did that. Dude, I don't give a f what you did. Just give me some information so I can go ahead and do it myself. You know what I mean? That's what we're going to get into. Your boy, Y. Clef Jean. I love y'all. Let's run that back. Let's get into it. <clears throat> run that back. So, as y'all know, as a young Fuji, I used to go to London a lot. And there was a show on television called Live with Jews Holland. And what I loved about this show was Jews would jam with musicians from all over the world. And he just felt like these musicians was something that y'all needed to see. And it always created the pulse of a new era. So I was like, I want my own versions of Jews Holland. So while I'm home, I get to talk to some of the most extraordinary people. So I want to tell you something, Rap City. So when I heard you, I was like, I have to bar with her. My first <laughs> initial reaction was like, where's the cipher? You know, where are we going? So I was like, you know how people be like, yo, I understand you, I understand your frequency. So yes. I think I think the only way to do that, I have to bar with you, like before we even get into a, like an interview. You want to bar with me? <laughs> like, I mean, just, <laughs> you I, know I guess we can bar. I mean, we hip hop. I'm gonna tell you, I ain't no freestyler, but I, I, I will bar. But we can now, bar. let me tell you why I wanted to bar with you. Yeah. Because you are Shakespearean in the sense of how you take the English language and you articulate it and you flip it into the most amazing schemes. And so similar to like when Shakespeare was like, to be or not to be, for me, what amazes me about you, you see, like you're like, hold up, Clef really studied me. So let me tell you, <laughs> what's amazing, um, you're gonna love this because I got so much stories for you, especially with MC Light, but we'll get into that. So what what's amazing about me to you is just the way that you play with words. So for me, playing with words was survival. Like coming from Haiti, not being able to speak English, then being raised in, the, in Marlboro Projects, and watching my cousins get killed, stabbed, all kind of things, being part, you know, wearing my Haitian flag on the right side of my pants, like, y'all gonna learn who we are. Like, right. and then I saw two people, like, face to face, and they were going at each other. And I told my man, yo, he's talking about this other person, mama. How come dude ain't drawing <laughs> on him? And he's like, he's like, yo. That's called battle rap. And I said, what do you mean? He says, they're jousting with words. So I was yeah. like, okay. I was like, yo, if I learn how to joust with words, I don't have to like slap box as much <laughs> or, or draw what I have to do. So 
It was like, I was like, if I ever see her, I was like, the only way she will understand me is I play with words just like you. Yes. So not in no freestyle sense, but just I am amazed by your literature. Wow. So I was like, when I... When I see you, I was gonna tell you that. Man, I told you, like, I'm honored and humbled to come from you because you are one of the people that I study that in, that even influenced, you know, my love for the, the, the language and the play with word and the art and yeah. craft of it and the science of it. So yeah. to hear you say that, like, you know, it let me know I, I've, I've done my just do, I did something right. <laughs> You, but yeah, you, like you killed, you killed it, man, and I love it so much. So I'm gonna go into my fantasy space, and I'm gonna bar for you. Okay. Because I know as it. long as I bar for you, I'm gonna feel good. You're gonna be like, okay, what I thought about him in '90, whatever era, it don't really matter because bars are timeless. Right. So I figure I would do the alphabets for you. Oh, okay. Come with it. Come All right. I, I did an alphabet record back in 2014. Wow, you wanna you wanna do your alphabets for me? I'll I'll remember that joint for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, if I, I was like, how do I was like, cause you're such an incredible lyricist, so I was like, I have to take you to a scheme that I know that you would know that I would have to put time to understand yeah. your frequency, right? Right. So A. I know B's and C's fellas. R.P. the Tookie, he got Ooh. tooken by the Terminator. Now that's the ex-governor of California, Schwarzenegger. He Ooh. could get D's nuts for executing <laughs> crip leaders. Now he on E or out his F and mind. G, it ain't hard to see. It's all a conspiracy. They caught my man in the H. Hit him with a Rico, A. He hit the freeway like freeway. Translation, just another pawn for the CIA. Cause where I'm from, you either dunking like Dr. J or get caught up in a drama with a K and get Ooh. slayed. My El Chapo boys, they will bring the drama to him like Tay Rock would say. They would carve a M in him and oh, mama screaming, not my boy. His mob deep, but he ain't pee. The havoc cost them the morgue. Now, wait for my cue before y'all leave the booth or you are gonna see this S on your T make you woozy woo from all that blue. You ain't catch that. I told Superman before he take flight, wait for my cue cause his weakness is Crips tonight and all that blue that's Crips tonight. And if people are wondering why my voice is sounding a little haunting that tells of the Crips tonight. Now I'm at the W. They setting up my suite. Dude working on punchlines, making it hard for me to compete. I ran for president. They considered my setups a threat. That's why they was dying for me to do a speech in Harlem so they could set me up like Malcolm X. X. Trooper done stop me. I told them don't ask why in the stash box I keep a Glock because you already know they killing and I told them I'm a rock star. He like, what that mean? I told them I keep an ax like ZZ Tops. Bars. Yo! Rap City, I had respect. to bar for you, yo. Yo, I had to bar I am for you. <laughs> yo, you, where, that, where is that gonna live? We need to be, that need to be out in the world. People I, don't, no, people don't. No, I just don't. had to, yeah, I had to bar for you. It's a select few that still appreciate the craft in that yeah. way. Like, it's, it's, so, it's so layered and creative. And that's the beauty and the art of the culture that I love so much. Like, you inspire me now. I, I wish I had came prepared. <laughs> nah, you don't have to be. That was like in my dream. I was like, cause you know how certain people could be like, I appreciate you. So yes. my way of telling you I appreciate you was just barring for you because right. That's how ill you are and, and how you take your words. And I noticed like coming up, you was a Jehovah Witness. Yes. My, 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 my daddy was a preacher. So mm -hmm. I was also raised in the church. Um, so take me back as far as you want, cause there's a little you and a little me that's sitting there and they tuned in. 
Um, what was the come up like and how did you start getting into the words? Like, what was the, because I know how Jehovah Witness is and how did that <laughs> go from the rhyming, you know, how, how did that right. work out? Break it down to me. Right. Um, I think I got to start when I fell in love with music first. Yeah. Um, I got to start there, like, just the art of music. Like, I fell in love with Michael and, and just music. And I think that's where it started with, you know, I love what he talked about, where he, he really reflected what was going on in the world, like songs like Heal the World, um, you know, um, They Don't Care About Us. You know, I could go on and on, Black and White, uh, uh, Will You Be There? And just how he described love and the world, I fell in love with the language first. Um, as well as, you know, my mom and dad were big on taking us to the library, so they made sure we read and I, I would read and I fell in love with the imagination, you know, and, and making mm -hmm. your own world and painting pictures. So when I got into hip hop, you know, I, I'm in North Carolina and I live in the country and it's, it's quiet, you know, you go outside and it's a lot of woods, it's a lot of field. It's not like you, like a major city where I could, I could grow up and turn any corner and see different type of actions, different cultures. So. I felt like I had to kind of create my world through through music. You know, I fell in love with hip hop. I, I remember uh, Method Man's uh, You're All I Need with Mary J. Blige. It's one of my favorite records, one of my favorite videos. And just to see that video, I'm just like, yo, this, this looks like a whole new world for me. It's, it's so much action. And MC Likes, poor Georgie, the way she told the story of a dude that was drunk and, you know, he ends up dying at the end. And just that whole story, I'm just like, yo, this is beautiful. Um, and at the time, I think what played into my my love for hip hop and, you know, that being my therapy and, and my escape was, you know, I'm one of five kids and I'm next to the last, but I'm the last girl grandchild. And there were no really no girls around my age. So the boys and my brother and my cousins, they would go play and my mom was like, you can't go with them today. So I kind of had to create my own world for me in a sense. Um, you know, so I did it through through creativity. I listened to music. Me and my dad would sit up and watch Video Soul and MTV Raps together and record it on VHS. And I just fell in love with this imaginary space of where music could take me anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's where it began for me. Like, you know, hearing Illmatic, hearing Reasonable Doubt, and it's so layered and coded. And I'm like, yo, that metaphor is is crazy that that they're using to this. You could take a whole a whole scenario and put it in two bars, mm -hmm. and that was the challenge that I like. You know what I'm saying? For me, <laughs> I like math, and it to me that was like math. Like yeah. okay, to get to X, you know, I gotta plug here and plug here and whoop de whoop. Like yeah. you know, that's what it was for me. Um, as well as you know, when I grew up and got into college, I was I was heavy into Deaf Poetry Jam. And that's a whole nother, you know, with music, you gotta, you gotta fit it into a, a, a rhythm and a flow, right? With Death Poetry Jam, it's just free, you know? Yes. And to, to, to come from a poetry background, studying Nikki Giovanni, Death Poetry Jam, and then the music and trying to put those together, you know, with the freedom of expression of poetry and how creative with no bounds you could be in tying that into, you know, rhythm and, and bars. It was plug and play for me, like, you know, and I think that's where it started. You know, it just gave me a voice and it was something I connected with. Um, yeah, that's and that that was that was the journey for me, you know, in a nutshell. Yo, what's dope about it is I'm looking at your eyes. I mean, the 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 audience could hear the audio, you feel me? But I'm looking at you and when you're like Illmatic and the way you talk about like the culture, the music literally takes me through a time. Um, and you mentioned MC Light. Uh, yes. That song that you like, that was uh, that was Lauren's first extra in a music video. Lauren was in that video? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Yo, that's crazy. I never... Light has never told me that. I've never, I've never heard that anywhere. Now I gotta go back and see if yeah. I can find her. Yeah. Right. So, me and Light, Light, I love very much. We That's actually go way back, right? Me and Light go back to the first play that was supposed to go to Broadway. 
Years ago before Hamilton, me and Light was kids. We was in a play called Club 12. It was a Shakespearean story of the 12th night. Mm -hmm. And we did, we, what happened if we took the 12th night and we put it in the streets? And then so literally I, I wrote like a lot of the music for the play, you know what I mean? Like a musical. But you talking about like 25 years ago, like way before Hamilton, anything, you see what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. So I go that far back with Light and, and her being amazing. And another connection we have is Lauren was doing poetry. And she was singing, but she also was doing poetry. And so it was the idea of saying, okay, these are the two people that you about to listen to first. And one was MC Light and the other was Queen Latifah at the time. So it was a conversion of how you're gonna take poetry and now flip it into rhymes, you know? Um, and I was like, yo, these two, these are the blueprints, just go study how they doing it. Because I said, when they come, they come in a way that the world has to pay attention to it. Um, and she definitely went and studied that. And just watching how you were a student of the culture, my first music video, I was an extra for Eric B and Rakim, Don't Sweat the Technique. Yo, <laughs> yo. What in the hip hop history is happening right now? <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. This is, this is but, like, what? <laughs> yo, but do you know what's funny though? When you are extra, you're not famous yet. Do you get me? Yes. Like, so we're 100. not talking, I'm saying like, so, <laughs> so to your point, um, so the song called Don't Sweat the Technique, you're gonna bug out when you see it. But um, I remember going to see Rakim at the House of Blues and I'm like, yo, I, you know, I'm a fan of yours. I'm a Rakim crazy. I'm like, yo, I was in your music video. <laughs> you know, he come to see him like, yeah. and he like, word God. And I think like it trips a lot of people out because when they go back, that's why when we talk about the culture, it's just the idea of like, when you're starting out, you just want to be heard yeah. for the culture because you feel like you got something to say um, right. within the community. Um, so I definitely find that amazing. Um, I know the reason why I wanted to talk to you is I feel like you're a leader um, and me being born in Haiti and understanding, you know, the Haitian government. Uh-oh. The, the curtain just fell. <laughs> yo, can we just keep hey. going? Yeah, we got to. Because that's what makes this shit funny as hell. That's what makes it so, perfect. So, yo, me in the crib, yo, I wish I could show you. Let your, let your light shine in. <laughs> yeah, let the light shine in, yeah. Before the, the light started shining in behind the pool in the back, um, I wanted to talk to you about, I was saying you a leader, you know, coming from Haiti, understanding the revolution of 1804, being like the first black republic. Um, so coming to the States, even when I was in school and it was teaching me black history and I was like, there's a whole thing missing in here, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and why we're not talking about that. So for, for you to take the stance that you take in hip hop today, mm -hmm. um, and you being like the new heir of what we call like an era that, you know, it's almost like we could see Nina Simone, you feel me? Yes. Like um, we could see like Billie Holiday, we could see, those that are coming in and through the art. It's like we can see you. And so how was that coming up? Because it couldn't be easy. I know how the industry is. Mm -hmm. I know how, because the reason I mentioned the church earlier because my daddy was a hardcore minister and he was like, yo, you can't serve two masters at the same time. It's either you're going to serve God or the devil. And then so I had to hide doing circular music at a time, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of the greats that ended up making that transition from the gospel to what, you know, was the music that we do today. So when I see you, um, I see a triumphant of a, a, a story that a little girl is sitting right now and she wants to hear how she can do it. So yeah. that's that point of view of how I'm asking you the question. Wow. Uh, I forgot to even touch on the Jehovah's Witness part. I'm going to double back on that for a second. 
Because it's funny you say that. Um, I hid what I did for a long time. Like, like you said, you know how Jehovah's Witnesses are. You don't associate yeah. with the world and, and listen to secular music. But hip hop was such a part of me and I knew the power in it. Um, yeah. You know, I went to school. Why are you talking about Bob? My rap, nothing. I didn't get baptized either because you know, once you get baptized as a Jehovah's Witness and you do something to the left that you're supposed to do, I was like, I don't want to go through the disfellowship process. <laughs> you yeah, know? exactly. That's um, right. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, I was like, yo, I know my heart and I always go in this, to the whatever I do, trying to do the right thing. And, and that's what I do with music. Um, yeah. You know, I, I came into an era too. Like, you know, I saw, you know, how it was for light and queen. I saw from the outside. I don't know how it was from the inside, but from the yeah. outside, I know how it looked for Lauren and MC Light. And it felt like they had just so much range and they had, you know, more lanes and ability to be individuals and to really speak that. Like hip hop then, you, everybody was more concerned about being themselves and being different and, and using their voice than it was in the era I came up with. In the era I came up, it was, it was like everybody just wanted to be the cookie cutter version of whatever was popping. And that's right. not, that's not, that wasn't the culture that I, I, I love, the culture that I love, like you say, with, with hip hop, with Nina Simone and Billie Holiday and, you know, uh, Harry Belafonte and any and everybody was, you know, to speak the times. Yeah, we can, we can make music that entertains, but there's a lot going on in the world. Like, we have to be the voice of the voiceless. You know, that's what hip hop is. What's going outside of my window? We are the greatest, you know, in a sense, like we have to document the times that we live in. And so, you know, outside of me taking the culture seriously to, to say like, you know, for one, I want to be known as the best and, and study the culture and, and create at the highest level. But I also want to want to do what the culture is and speak for the people, speak of the people, speak to the people and tell the stories. And and it was it was super challenging because, you know, it's like one, you know, I'm a woman and I came up in a time where a lot of women weren't getting that light. You know, we had Nicki Minaj. And Nicki Minaj was doing Nicki Minaj, and, you know, she had that space. But for a lot of other women, I think uh, when I when I very when I very really first started was myself, Jean Grey. Um, you know, I, I think yeah. Bahamadia was still rocking. Uh, I could I could name a few ladies, but you know, there was there was no name for us, and so it felt like there was layers. First, I got to come in, I got to get respect, and then when you start to get a little respect, you know, people call you boring. Nobody wants to hear that. I listen to conscious rappers. And, you know, if you're not mentally strong and if, and if you're not secure in what you're doing and, and understanding that, you know, me doing what I do, as long as I continue to do it, I will break through. Or, you know, if I don't, so what? You know, my purpose wasn't to get in it for myself or money or for fame. It was because I wanted to make great music and I wanted to make music that would inspire people, that, you know, would would speak to people, heal people. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to, to make music that reflected a bunch of different emotions of whatever, you know, was happening around me. Um, and, and it was challenging, you know, because you get caught up in the rat race of everything else and, you know, the accolades and, you know, am I worthy enough because I don't have these things? Or everybody that I grew up loving, you know, they made the music that, you know, I, I'm falling in love and I'm trying to make, but I'm not getting the same recognition. You know, am I, am I not good enough? Like, what is it? So that was a mental space that I had, had to really work through and I had to tell myself and Knife, you know, Knife Wonder and Young Guru, my circle, you know, they, they were there to support me and remind me that this is a marathon, you know, and my story is not supposed to be like everybody else. And the people that listen and that, that the ears that you have, that's all you need. You can't be concerned with, you know, anybody else that doesn't listen, you know. But it was always bigger for me because, you know, you want to, in, in truth, and when truth is in music, you know that people can be free by that, you know. And you know how it feels to be truly free. Um, and that's what it was, you know. I just wanted to bring balance to the game and always give people a different perspective of what we are fed a lot of times through the business, you know, that doesn't speak for the culture. Um, you know, I had, I wanted to be the difference and, and have, you know, again, I wanted people just to mentally be free. And at the end of the day, you got to do what's true for you. You can't be led by what's true for the business. So that, that was the challenging part. And it's still challenging to this day, but you know, we making some headspace, so. Yeah, insanely making headspace uh -huh. moving forward. Um, I remember Jay-Z saying something that resonated, we was at, Clive Davis party and he was getting honored 
And he was like, Bob Marley don't got no Grammys. Bob Marley don't have no form of accolades. Like, while he's moving through this planet, he's just like spreading love yes. and he's doing what he's doing. And he created generational wealth for his generations to come, right? right. Because I think like some of us are like vessels, you know, and yes. as a vessel, like you can't, Martin Luther King is a vessel. I got I see Martin Luther King with a cigarette in his hand and he had that look like, man, should I just give up today? You know what I mean? Like people don't talk about that side of the struggle. Like mm -hmm. when you just be feeling like, man, yes. Lord, why you done call me for this? Can I get a <laughs> break? Can I get a day off? You know what I mean? So, but mm -hmm. you're amazing. We're watching the climb. We're watching the rise and the accolades are given. The trumpets are sounding, just so you know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's definitely a sign from God. Look, the curtain done went down, the light done came out. <laughs> yeah. So we definitely, so another thing I wanted to ask you, so like, my 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 name is Nel Us Wyclef Jean. So Nel Us Wyclef Jean, like, so that's like French Creole, but you know, and when I say French Creole, like some people say, hey, it's Francais, you know, but I be like, no, it's Creole, it's straight Creole. And <laughs> in high school, I took my first name. So, you know, we going through our hip hop phases. Yeah. So, and we going through our 5% percenter phases. So we got like different things. So now in high school, I took my first name, Nell. And then I was like, yo, I'm about to call myself Nelly Nell. That's going to be my <laughs> name, right? So then, I, I, I did Nelly Nell, and then I started, um, you know, studying like 5%, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm going to change my name from Waclef to Walik, right? So then <laughs> I became like Walik and peace to the gods, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, and these are all parts of my name, and then I'm Waclef. So I wanted to ask you, um, Rap City, was that always the name? And if not, what was the name? And how did you get there? Because <laughs> the name definitely sticks. You know what I'm saying? Yo, um, okay. Before before I, I landed on Rhapsody, I only had one other one, and it was just a uh -huh. shortened version of my name. My, my uh -huh. birth name is Marlena Evans. Um, okay. And all, you know, my, my cousins, they would call me Lena. Lena, so I, I just put an E on it. I was like, Lena E, whatever. Um, uh, Lena E, Lena E. Okay, you <laughs> see? Up. That's like, part of that thing. That's yeah, that thing. Like, like Sheila yeah. E, like yeah, exactly. Lena E, dang. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. I was like, yo, yeah. cool. But then I was, then I got in the face, like, nah. You know, and I'm, I'm thinking like, yo, all these rappers that I like, you know, like uh, Busta Rhymes and, you know, you got, um, uh, who, who dang, I'm having not well, not the short for Nazir, but you got Jay Z, you know, um, Queen Latifah, which that's her real name too. I don't know, but I'm thinking yeah. like, no, I need an yeah. alias, Buster yeah. Rhymes. I need, I need an yeah. alias. So, yeah. you know, while, while I was going through my death poetry phase, um, this was before, like at this time, I was more so writing poetry than doing than doing lyrics and trying to rap uh, because that that wasn't a real reality for me yet. Um, and I, I was in this hip hop group at the time with a bunch of artists. And I was the only one that didn't necessarily DJ or do graffiti or rap, you know? So I was like, well, I do poetry. Um, so I was like, I need a name. So I, I was, I actually was reading the dictionary and when I, when I read the, the Webster dic, uh, definition of it, poetry spoken with great emotion. You know, I was like, yo, that's what poetry is. That's what music is for me in general. Um, so I'm gonna just run with that. Um, and I remember my, my boyfriend from high school, we were friends at the time. Uh, I was in college and he called a checkup for me. You know, I was I, he was one of the few people that I told like, yo, I want to be a rapper. And you know, if I'm ever a rapper, I'm gonna call myself Rhapsody. He started laughing. He was like, that's whack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you crazy, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, but um, I, I called myself that more so because I thought I was just gonna be a spoken word artist. You know what I'm saying? Like, though I knew I wanted to be an MC, it, it, it wasn't a reality. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out how I was gonna get from there to really, you know, 
pursuing and living it um, and doing it. And here we are. And to be honest, like I think every day, like, you know, I really want to just call myself Marlena. Like there's something in just people just knowing who you are straight up, you know. Um, and that's that's one of the things I'm like, oh, I done came too far though. It's a brand now, um, yeah, yeah. you know, but you know, as but I But now as we I all grew, know, like we got it. It's the brand, it's Marlena, yeah. you know? Yeah. Marlena, Marlena, yeah, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all used to work at I used to work at Food Lion, and there's this group called the Wildflower Flowers. And every time, every day for like like ten times a day, they had this song called the Three Marlenas that would come on. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh wow! One, two, three Marlenas. Wow, that might be a sample. Yeah, help me up, uh, Clef. <laughs> I, I, I am. That's this brings me to my last question. Um, I, we're, we're heavily connected. I think that you're like, yo, you know, I barred up for you in the beginning just so you could hear the frequency that was like me acknowledging you. And as far as like production, you spoke about math earlier. And yeah. so in my hood, they call me the thug nerd. So, okay. Cause I, I'm the one, like I literally was the kid that would go to Sam Ash and sit there, read about the velocities, the sine oh. waves and all of that stuff and bring it back home. Um, your style of production, I, I also heard that, you know, you 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 play in this space too. Uh, yeah, and I probably in a different way than you, but I know yeah. I heard about a phone thing, about you recording on a phone. <laughs> a oh, record. Oh, oh, early when I first started, when I first, uh -huh. uh, when I, the very first time I started emceeing, um, this was before like uh, iPhones was really popping like that. Uh -huh. So I went to um, where you couldn't do voice notes and I ain't know nothing about microphones setting that up. So I went uh -huh. to Walmart and I got a, uh -huh. a tape recorder <laughs> uh -huh. and I would I would ride around in the car, I sit in the car and I play a beat through the radio speakers and yes. I record I record myself rapping and the music in the background just to get a rhythm. Genius. <laughs> you know, Genius. Um, that's how I started out early on. Um, and I also tried to make beats for like a week. Um, uh -huh. Before I started rapping, I went I went to Sam Ash, he was going out of business in Raleigh. And, uh, they had this beat machine. I don't even know what kind of, it was like this uh -huh. big. Had it like maybe something, like six Something pads. RZA probably got. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, a, little, a little version of it. A little um, version of it. A little version. And I couldn't figure that thing out for nothing. Um, but you know, I, Yo, that's I, ill though. You just hit it. That by any means necessary, I promise you, when we went under with the COVID-19 thing, yeah. I was out of a studio, couldn't get to anything. They shut stuff down in Jersey. I promise you, I got a record called Distance the same way. Like, because oh. when you, when you, when you have less to work with at a time, yeah. it's sometimes when the best stuff comes out. Because literally, Think about it. Somebody tell you that you need a microphone, but why, really? Because as right. long as that frequency is going through that cassette, somebody gonna hear it. So exactly, I that's pretty. That's definitely amazing. So <laughs> definitely, you you're a nerd as I am. So <laughs> in saying that, I look forward to. There's a word that I use in the studio. It's called catching a vibe. And yeah, I'm with that. I look, yo, I'm so excited that we met. I'm so excited that I got to bar up for you. I was like, that was my dream. Oh. And now I'm gonna do like RZA and go on my big machine and then whip up some stuff and just send to you and see if you catch it. Oh, Cause I know your yes. frequency. You know, know my frequency, frequency, man. You know yes. my frequency is. I do. It's, it's an energy, it's a feeling, it's some soul. You know, it's. You you know what I'm talking about, like you know I I, I can't do empty music. It gotta have yeah. it gotta have some musicality and, and feeling in it. You know whatever that right. feeling is, whether we on the it's the, it's the vibe we going to Haiti and we by the waves and we you know we bopping out. You know we just doing some real soulful. But I'm excited about that for sure. I want to see. I want to catch this vibe, this wave with you. <laughs> Alright, we gonna catch it. I promise you that. And um. The, my last question is because I'm going to let you go. I'm going to jump back on uh, my motorcycle. I love motorcycles. I'm going on a long ride. That's when I think. So, yeah. man, the climate that we in, you know, your last words to the folks. My daughter, 15, she came to me and was like, Daddy, 
I'm going to the protest with my mama and we about to cross the Manhattan Bridge. And I caught myself for a minute, right? Then I was like, y'all go ahead. Because it was like, it's almost like I'm looking at myself because I remember when Mayor Bloomberg was cutting down um, the education program in, in New York. And I went and I marched, I got arrested. I went to jail, I did. And it's almost like I'm watching myself, but I could see the transition with the youth. It's a different energy out there. Yeah. And I think like what Dave Chappelle says, like we've been doing what we've been doing for so long. Our job is to continue to do it. But now it's almost like it's conveyed inside of them. You know what yes. I mean? And so how do they harness this energy in your opinion? And how do they push it and don't slow down and, um, and keep moving forward so that we get results? Man, uh, I think the, the biggest thing with this new generation is it's a couple of things. One is that access to information. You know, they have everything at their fingertips. And, you know, especially to the ones who are not us and who don't live our lives um, as Black Americans, they get to learn so much that they were taught that was wrong. You yeah. know, so now they have a different view and they're like, yo, no, I want to be on the right side of history. So that's one thing, like, just people's awakening in that sense to yeah. information. Um, two, I think, you know, internet and social media makes the world this small you know yes. so we all are connected um and that energy is transferred even around the world you know you, you feel that vibe and i think you know just knowing that you have a village of people who are with you and you know whether you look on it's like in portland they getting down in portland like they going that's nutty right. in portland you know what i'm saying and that that's like yo i see how y'all moving when i may not have known what to do before like i have a, a point of reference you know I could reach out and see a Tamika Mallory, or I can go to Wyclef, you know, I, I have things to reference. I can go to YouTube and know how to move. Um, and the youth, the youth, the thing about the youth, though, they always fearless, you know. Yeah, um, that's right. They're still young and they haven't gone to the world enough where, uh, you know, they're conditioned. You know, they just free out here and they got this new energy and, and they they invigorated by it. So I think all of those things to play play into that. But you know, what's going to keep them going? I think is, you know, that connection. And, and sharing information and sharing stories and, you know, hold, holding people accountable too. I've seen people, you know, be called out like, yo, like what y'all worried about over here? That's not really important. We got to do better mm -hmm. and do this. And sometimes Thanks. you need that. Like, I think all of that is important, you know, with the fact that, you know, they do have, you know, legends like yourself, um, you know, Queen Latifah, uh, Tamika Mallory, um, John Lewis rest his soul. But, you know, I know he was a leader mm -hmm. for a lot of youth too and teaching That's them. Right. Um, so, oh, you know, that, I think that that gap is bridged too. You know, I've, I've heard stories, I think about, you know, conversations rather of uh, people think to, uh, asking what was different with the civil rights movement. And they were saying, you know, our parents were out in the streets and the kids were at home and we necessarily didn't have anybody to teach us because they was out there doing it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now there's a, a, a bridge to the gap where, you know, we can show them the way, and, you know, they have so much they can reference along with figuring out how they want to do it too. So. I think that's all going to keep the movement moving forward. But I think the, I think the base and the biggest thing is the access to information and becoming aware. You know, like uh, Gil Scott Heron said, the revolution won't be televised because it starts in your mind. And as we continue to tell our truths, you know, the real truth of, of what everything is, and that's where freedom comes from. And that's where the energy to want to free people comes from. Wow. Amazing. I'm sitting here as a selfish composer and producer. I'm not going to lie to you. I am going to sample that last one minute of yours, and that's how I'm going to start a whole record. Oh, like you hey. was going. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honored, bro. I'm, I've been learning a lot uh, of myself, so, you know, I'm just passing it forward because that's what it's about, you know, passing the information and not holding on to it. All right, well, I love you, love you, love you, love you. I love you. you. <laughs> and I look forward to rocking with you and keep it up. Keep inspiring us, um, and you're incredible. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. I love you too, Legend. This is an honor for me. <laughs> Give you a virtual hug, baby. Give it to me. I'll see you in person. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to put y'all on. 
Aro Parks. This joint called Black Dog. Give me like a nostalgic vibe. So Arlo Parks is an amazing songwriter. By way of London, of course, you know. Something about London, I have the vibe. I think it's South London, if I'm not mistaken. And um, as, as a youngster, I've always been going in that part of the world and the writers and the, the musicians, the vibe that comes out of there is pretty. It's one of them places, like when I need inspiration, I'm straight up there because it um, takes me to a whole nother level. So definitely, you know, in an era like where there's so much music going on, you know, I still, I had to put y'all up on this one, you know? So all of Parks have a very unique style um, voice-wise. You know, I'm someone who grew up listening to like, the likes of like Billie Holiday, Nina Simone. So for me, like, um, she sounds like very soulful. It's a very soulful vibe. Um, but at the same time, there's always something I say as a producer. There's people that sing and people that sang. Two different things. So sang is different. It makes you feel a vibration and an emotion. It's not necessarily like the person is welling all over the place, but it's just like they're, they're singing. It, it, it's like blue, the blues. It just grabs you into emotion. Um, that's the energy that I get from her, for sure. So check it out. It's called Black Dog. Weekly. There you go. You sound like uh, you're about to drop some bars. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> <laughs> that is not happening. What's the word? Oh, man. So, Wycliffe, I, since, since um, quarantine started, since we've all been at home most of the day and working from home, I started doing something that I never used to do, except on the road. I would do this on the road sometimes. Mm -hmm. I started binge watching things. And sometimes, every once in a while, actually only twice, there's something that will cause me to stay awake until 6 a.m. because I have to see the next episode, the next episode, and the next episode. <laughs> like, I can't help myself. And I keep telling myself, I'm gonna go to sleep at four, I'm gonna go to sleep at five. And then at six o'clock, I'm like, oh my God, if I go to sleep now, I still have to wake up at 7.30. Should I just watch another episode? Yep. Yeah. So the thing that has done that for me recently, I wonder if you've ever seen this show. Is this show Black Lightning? Have you, have you seen Black Lightning? Okay, so you first of all have to understand that you are talking to a comic book expert here. Okay. All right, that's the first thing. Okay. And I was the kid in the hood. Yeah. Little kid. And I'm always like, yo, man, where are the black superheroes at, man? Exactly, exactly. So, this is, okay, you and understand I'm like, where yo. I'm going with this. Yes. So yeah, Black Lightning is very addictive. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and the, I guess that's my whole point is, so I'm watching this show, so there's three seasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can't really say what, what happens. Don't, thank you. Okay, 
But so there's three seasons and I've watched all three seasons in the course of like two weeks. It did take me two weeks. So not like the most intense. Yeah, that's what watching. lockdown does to people. Yes. So and it's like there's like all this science fiction stuff. Yes. So it's like these sci-fi. Black superheroes and science fiction and superpowers and it, it's so good and it's so exciting and and I wasn't a comic book freak like only oh. Wonder Woman and like I only liked Wonder Woman and Spider Man were oh, yeah. my comic books. You like some heavy ones. Yeah, when I when I was yeah. a kid. Nobody could touch Wonder Woman. Yeah. Once she put the lasso on you, you gonna tell the truth. That's the original lie detector. That's Wonder the original Woman. wop. That's Ooh. the. Talk to them, Maddie. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's that's the original. Wow. I need a sound effect for that. <laughs> I just wanted to know if you knew about Black Lightning. I yeah. wanted to get well, into how amazing it is to watch these black superheroes to watch this show that's got like all this like science fiction and stuff that I normally probably would not stay tuned for. You know what I love about the era of like where we're going into, whether we're talking about like sci-fi, yeah, or we're talking about superheroes in general, because they, you know, there's like different cliques, they come in different forms yes. per, you know, which side of the spectrum of superhero that you're looking for. But this is what I love. I love the fact that the progress that we are making in film um, and the, the quantum leaps that we're taking. Mm -hmm. Because when you look at the origin mm -hmm. of how they portrayed Blacks yeah. in the beginning in Hollywood and, and how we are portrayed now. Yeah. And I feel like there are much more creators where the level, the, the, the playing field is leveled, right? Because at the end of the day, if I like Superman, yeah. and I grew up with Superman, and I'm in the hood, like, don't you think I'm asking myself, you know, do we have like, is there a Superman here? Yeah, where's our But every time I saw like Superman, I saw Batman, you know, I seen the Thor, mm -hmm. you know, um, Spider-Man, um, Aquaman, you know, I could keep going, and I'm my, like... My black superhero back then was Shaft. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. So, but, but you see what I'm saying. Yeah. So for me, I love, because like, we're colorblind, meaning like us. Right. We're like that, and we hope the whole world could be like that, but it, it's really not, right? Yeah. And we all are trying to get it to that kind of level. Yeah. But I feel like more creators, and thank God for the internet also, um, yeah. I think like it broke a mold, and I'm so happy to see more diversity. Like we have so much more diversity in this space, for sure. I agree. I agree. And yeah, it for me it's beautiful to to look on a movie screen and and see us portrayed on screen as the queens that we are. To well, see. I mean, yeah, but for me 100% like queens, kings, kings of the universe, right? But at the end of the day, if I got my boy, he from London, right? Yeah. He have his own superheroes. If I got my other boy, you know, he from Sweden, yeah. right? Like me and Avicii used to always kid about this. He'd be like, yo, you the Haitian mafia. And I'd be like, yeah, you're the Viking mafia. Like we make, <laughs> like we can relate to each other in very cool ways. I just don't understand the brainwash of yeah. just like constant years of saying, if it's superheroes and they're gonna, have to go and um, and and be box office hits. Right. You know, this has to be portrayed. That was my whole thing. So I'm happy that um, the playing field is definitely leveling off more. And when this happens, um, the level of creativity is endless because now you're not putting no borders. You're not putting uh, you got to be this color to play this role, or you right. can, you know. So definitely. But I got to tell you. Black Lightning is definitely amazing. 
Um, I'm obsessed. And yeah, definitely. Like, Black Lightning is the truth. Um, in a dream, I saw, like, Black Lightning yeah. in a mashup, like, versus Wolverine. Oh. And it, it really went down. You know what I'm saying? I feel bad for Wolverine. Yeah. Now, easy. Because Wolverine can shed skin. Like, he's just not going to go down like that. But that would be, like, a good pair up. Yeah. I think, we, I think we probably just made somebody else a billion dollars because we're going to exactly. be sitting back like, we'll yo, see that movie they're going to be like, yo, years. next coming up. You know, exactly. Black Lightning meets Wolverine in Harlem. And <laughs> Sometimes people be like, what frame of mind was you when you did the score with those verses, man? Because them rap verses sounding crazy. But tell me, what would you do if you heard somebody go, Betty and I, here I come, you can't hide ya. Yeah. I'm gonna find you and make you up. I'm automatically gonna be like, now that I escape, sleep, walk away. Those who could relate know the world ain't cake. Jail bars ain't golden gates. Those who fake, they break. When they meet their 400 pound mate, if I could rule the world, everyone would have a gun. And the ghetto, of course, when giddy up and on they horse, yo. I kick a rhyme, drinking moonshine. I pour a sip on the concrete for the deceased, but no, don't weep. While Clef's in a state of sleep, thinking about the robbery that I did last week. Money in the bag, banker look like a drag. I wanna play with Pelicans from here to back. Dad, gun blasting fast, I think I'm hit. My girl pinched my hips to see if I still exist. I think not. I'll send a letter to my friend. A born again, hula again, only that be. Y'all like, ready or not? Here I come. You can't hide. I'm gonna find you and make you. You, you tuned in? Fuji's. Flashback. Y'all go. Fuji's. Flashback. Run it back. Fuji's. Flashback, run it back, Fuji's. Ooh la la la, it's the way that we rock when we're doing our thing. Ooh la la la, it's the natural vibe that the refugees bring. Ooh la 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 la. Sweet thing, she loved me like no other before her. I know what y'all want me to be, y'all want me. I gotta stop, gotta stop, you know what I'm saying? I need the market to open back up, fill the people, but for now, y'all gotta just run that back on that Wide Clef show, baby. Rap City, you're beyond amazing. You have to understand, I'm from the 90s, so when I hear you, I get beyond excited. And people be like, yo, what happened to this form of hip hop? Where's that dude? You're obviously listening to Rap City. Um, I think you're incredible. I look forward to staying connected and I'm gonna be persistent. You know, like, I'm like the RZA when it comes to doing beats. Like, I think you're probably gonna get flooded with a thousand beats and Haiti on the beat and we definitely gonna catch a vibe. Uh, raise up. Yeah, Ria's up the toast right now to Rap City. We love you. <laughs>